The video was too long by 34 seconds, so I had to split it from the uh, from the introduction. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go on to the code. So this is the code, and uh, here we see the um, the same uh, game details uh, that we saw in the first code. So really, not much has changed there. The only thing is that I added this new breaking concept as an example of extending the, the keyboard capabilities. Okay. Um, the next thing to notice is that the length of the code is much shorter. Well, the length of the code that doesn't deal with key handling is much shorter. So here we have the key, the frame setup, okay, and the only thing that has to do with the key bindings is here, okay. And then uh, we have this, um, the draw handler as usual, except that this time it's also going to draw break messages, okay. And then we have this new, this new break function that we haven't, didn't have before, okay. And um, we are creating a key map object and passing in uh, pretty much what we had before. The only difference is that now we have um, instead of just a key and an action, we have a key and a tuple where the first value is the name of the action and the second value is the action itself. Okay, And so we're passing this dictionary into a new key map object and um, uh, and then later on we're going to add um, another action for the down key that will be breaking. Okay, So um, Let's see how this works. We need to look at the key map, the key map class itself. So, in the init method, we see that um, we expect a key map. Okay, we if it's none, we'll just create a new dictionary. If it's not none, we'll assign it to whatever was passed in. Uh, we'll also create a dictionary of labels and a dictionary of inputs, text inputs. Okay. So straightforward stuff. The next thing that we're going to do, this is a fairly long method. So the first thing that we do is we take, we, we, this is set frame. We're going to receive a frame, okay? And we're going to call the, the set key down handler and set key up handlers on that frame, okay? And we're going to pass in this weird lambda thing, okay? Which is just a function. It's a function that accepts a key and then does something with that value. And what does it do? It calls self key down passing in that value. Okay? And then the same thing happens here. Okay, we're calling except this time we're calling self key up instead of key down. Okay. So then the next thing that we do is we're going to add labels so that we can see what the current key bindings are. Okay? So we loop through all of the keys, all of the key and uh, name action pairs in the key map, okay? And um, we're going to set the value in the label to be equal to the, to the um, sorry, we're just going to create the labels, excuse me, we set the values later. So we set the label at uh, in the dictionary that corresponds to name, we're going to set it to a new label. That's all. And then the next thing we do is um, we're going to show, we're going to add the inputs to be able to change them. So we're going to add for, we're going to add a new text input for each key binding that we have in the in the dictionary. We don't know which what we have, but, but that's okay. We can just loop through it. So we again loop through the key name action values in the key map. Um, and we, uh, for each one of them, we're going to add a value into inputs at uh, whose whose key is key, is the name, is this name here, and um, again we're just going to add a new input. Okay, and the the label of that input is going to be new, and then whatever the name of the action is, and then key. And the handler for this is going to be. Um, is going to be uh, the result of calling this f method. So self get set key function 
So really, this is kind of confusing. Set key function is the function that we're going to that will be called whenever uh, the user enters text and press and presses enter in a particular field. Okay, we need a specific set key function for the particular name, and that's what this get set function returns. So let's look at that. Uh, well, we'll look at that in a second. Um, the final thing that we do after this happens is we call set self update labels. So we've created these labels up here, and we're going to update them to show the current uh, key configuration. Okay. So the the next thing that we need to look at is um, get set key function. Okay. So it takes name and it returns another weird lambda thing. So remember, this is just a function. It's a function that accepts a single parameter called text input. And what it does is call self passing in, it's calling self.setKey and passes the name along with text input. Okay? So this name is this value and this text input is this value. Okay. The next thing that we do is uh, we have this set key function. So this is responsible for changing the key binding. And we, we had very similar code in the previous version. So what happens is we get an action name and we get a new key. Okay. We're going to create a new new map just an empty dictionary and just like before and we're going to loop through all of the key name action values in key map okay if this name matches the action name up here that means that the new key should replace the existing key so we're just going to do that in the new map okay and if it doesn't equal if this is not true then we're going to um, just use the existing key as is, okay? And then we set self key map equal to new map, and then we don't need to print. That's just for debugging. And then finally, we update the labels so that we can see the new key bindings, okay? Um, and print map is just a convenience method for. Uh, debugging and update labels like before what we're doing is looping through uh, the key name action values in key map and we're going to set the particular label associated to name we're going to set its text equal to name colon and then the key that's bound to it okay now we have the actual key bindings, so let's look at them. So just like before, we have the key down and key up uh, functions. They're methods, though, so that means that they accept self, they accept two parameters, and this is the reason that we have to use these lambdas that you that I showed you. Um, is because these functions, these methods, accept two two parameters, but we only want a, a function that um, accepts one parameter and uh, which would be key. So, um, so that's why we had the lambdas. Um, so, uh, and then all that happens is we call self key action, passing in key and true. Okay, and we do the same thing here, except we pass in false, because uh, once again the key is up versus the key being down here. So we can look at key action now. Again, this very similar code to what we saw in the in the previous version. We're looping through all the key name action values in key map items. Okay, uh, we're going to compare key, so the current value in the list in the uh, dictionary. Okay, we're going to get its simple GUI key map value, and we're going to compare it to key pressed, which is here. Okay, if they're the same, we're going to run the action that's associated to it. So we're going to run this action. Passing in key is down. So just like before. Okay. So now the final thing 
is that we need some way to add new actions to this. So we have this add action method. Now it accepts self and it accepts a new key name action value. So it accepts it, it the key name action is just going to be a tuple where the first value is key and the second value is a tuple containing name and action. Okay? So that gets assigned here and then we just add it to key map self.keymap and we're done that's it there's nothing else okay so I'll uh, just quickly review using that so we create keymap here we pass in a dictionary okay of keys and tuples containing names and actions okay um, then we decide oh we've got this other function that we need to add to the keymap so we'll just add another one okay uh, so it, with uh, this key and then this tuple, okay, and the whole thing is a tuple that gets passed in to the add action function or method rather. Okay, so that's it. So let's look at it in in practice. Okay, so just like before, we have the current key bindings listed here, and we have the ability to add new key bindings except now we have a fourth key binding that we can use this new break key so once again watch down here and you can see what happens when I use the current key binding so if I press up we're thrusting I release we're not thrusting I press down we're breaking I release we're not breaking I press left we're turning left I press right we're turning right I can change this to be a, change thrust to be W, change right to be D, have to press enter after each of these, forgot about that, and I can press S to break, okay, and now once again watch down here, okay, and you can see that W is now thrust, S is now break, a is now turn left and D is turn right. So we have a class that allows us to bind keys, it allows us to change them, it um, allows us to add new values, and it's completely separate from the rest of the code. We can reuse this anywhere we want. So I hope you see the beauty and power of this, and I thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.